<clears throat> well, if you have your Bibles, please open to the Gospel of John. Uh, last week we started a study. <clears throat> We're still in the very opening parts of it, kind of the prologue section of John. There is a television program, I haven't seen it very often, but uh, the premise of it is very, very interesting. The program's name is Undercover Boss. What it is, is uh, a chairman or a CEO of some corporation will go and infiltrate his own company and do it like at the lowest level. And he doesn't introduce himself. Nobody knows who he is. And uh, they, they actually follow his experiences uh, working in his own company. Uh, I guess in one of the episodes, the chairman or CEO of White Castle Hamburgers. Now, we don't have them out here, but they do on the back, the back east. Very popular hamburger chain. Uh, went and started working, and part of his responsibility was to bake the buns, and he ruined, he burnt all the buns that day, and uh, fouled up everything. Uh, apparently, the CEO of Frontier Airlines in one of the episodes <clears throat> they didn't know who he was, so they assigned him to clean the restrooms of the airplane. And he fouled it up, and he delayed the whole flight. You know? and, and so the premise is, is very interesting, because a lot of these CEOs have absolutely no understanding of what's really going on in their company. But the other side of it is this. These employees did not know who the boss was. Here is the head of their whole company. And this person shows up, and they treat them just like anybody else off the street because they don't realize that he is the boss. Well, when we get into our key verses this morning in John chapter 1, verse uh, 11 and 12, we're going to be talking about the light. Remember last week we said that Jesus is the Word, but actually John introduced him as the Word, the life, and the light. Well, today we're going to talk about the light and in our key verses, we see that Jesus Christ, God the Son, the creator of the world, showed up on the scene, and his own people, his own creatures, did understand who he was. John chapter 1, verses 11 and 12, Yet he came to that which was his own, and his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. If there's one point that we need to make clear as we get into the study, it would be this. Jesus is the true light. Now again, Jesus is being introduced to us by John. John was one of the original 12 disciples. He was one of the 12 apostles. He walked with Jesus. He talked with Jesus. He touched him. He was his friend. And he realized that Jesus was more than just a mere human. That he was more than a mere mortal. That he was the eternal Son of God. And so as he begins his story of Jesus, from the very beginning, he wants us to understand who Jesus Christ is. He is the true light. And the question then that I need to ask myself when I take a look at these verses would be, am I a child of God? Now you might say, well, that's a rather dumb question because we're all children of God. You've heard that expression. If you're a human being, if you're living on planet Earth, you're a child of God. Well, we're not talking about a child of God in the general sense. We're talking about being adopted into God's family and having a relationship with God as our Heavenly Father. So three things that we're going to take a look at quite briefly this morning. Revealing the light, recognizing the light, and receiving the light. Revealing the light, recognizing the light, and receiving the light. First of all, revealing the light. In John chapter 1, verse 6, it goes on to say, There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. Now, we need to make this very clear from the very beginning of chapter 1. This was John the Baptist, not John the Apostle. As, as John writes the story of Jesus, he doesn't talk about himself other than to say he was the disciple whom Jesus loved. And so in John chapter 1, as, as he starts to unfold the story of Jesus, 
He takes us to the Jordan River. He takes us out into the wilderness where John the Baptist was baptizing. Now remember, if you've studied elsewhere in Scripture, you would know that John the Baptist is actually Jesus' cousin. And John the Baptist was called to be a prophet. Many people believe that he went out into the Essene community, which was the, the group of people that lived and actually copied the Dead Sea Scrolls. And out there, he went to the Jordan River, and he was baptizing for repentance. He was trying to prepare the way so that when the Messiah came, the people would be ready for him. And so in verse 7, it says this, He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. Excuse me. So John is not the Messiah. John is not the Redeemer. John is not the Savior. John is simply a spokesperson. He is there with one particular job, and that is to introduce people to Jesus Christ the Messiah, who is the light of the world. He is not the light. He is only a witness to the light. Now, as you know, light is very important. Can you imagine if there was no light on planet Earth? Imagine if somehow somebody was able to turn off the sun. What would happen to life on planet Earth? It would end. Because without the sun, there would be no light, there would be no heat, everything would freeze up. But even if there were warmth, everything on planet Earth needs light in order to live and to grow. Uh, if you have a garden, Normally, you plant your garden where it can get good sunlight. Let's say you have a tomato plant, and you think, wow, you know, it's awfully hot. I don't want the hot sun to cook this tomato plant. So you go get a bucket, and you put it over the bucket, uh, the bucket over the plant. And you think, I'm going to protect this plant from the hot sun. What would happen to that plant eventually? It would die without light. Well, John is introducing us to the true light. Not just the author of all light in the universe, but of spiritual light. Remember, he's introducing us to the Son of God. Last week, we were introducing him as the Word of God. Now he's emphasizing the fact that Jesus is the true light. And so John the Baptist has come. And his job is to be the front man. To go ahead. To promote the way so that when Jesus comes... The people will understand who he is. So that's revealing the light. Now secondly, recognizing the light. Verse 9. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. This goes back to this idea that we talked about in the introduction, uh, in this undercover boss. Jesus Christ as the Word of God, as the true life, and here described as the true light, is the Creator. Jesus Christ, God the Son, comes to earth in the form of a man, and yet people don't recognize Him. How can it be? How can it be that God came into the same world He created through the creatures made in His image, and the world did not know Him? It shows how deeply fallen human nature had rejected God. So, as John is trying to unfold the story, he wants us to understand from the very beginning who Jesus is. He is God. He is the Creator. And yet, when he presents himself to mankind as a whole, mankind misses out on who is even there. That's recognizing the light. Then let's go on to receiving the light. John chapter 1, verse 11, it says this, He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. He came to that which was his own, and his own did not receive him. 
Remember, Jesus was born into a Jewish family. He was born into the nation of Israel. If you go back into the Old Testament, remember that God chose one man and his family to bless the earth, and that was Abraham. Abraham and his descendants become the nation of Israel. To them, the promises are given. To them, the covenant was given. And they had all the prophecies concerning the coming of the Messiah and what the Messiah would need to do for them. And yet, when Jesus arrived on the scene, having all of the prophecies before them, as a whole, the Jewish people rejected Jesus. They did not accept who he was. They did not understand who he was. But here is this tremendous promise. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become what? Children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, nor of a, a husband's will, but born of God. Here, John reminds us of the nature of the new birth. It is God's sovereign gift to man, not man's achievement. In other words, most of us understand that we're sinners, and we've been separated by God, from God by our sin. Religion as a goal. Religion tries to find a way to earn our way back to God. So there are many religions on planet Earth. And many of these religions teach their people to do good things, to do religious things, hoping that somehow through our religiosity, through our own goodness, we can please God. But what does the Bible say? For all of sin come short of the glory of God. The Bible says that all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. So how can you and I be be reconnected with God? Well, it's not through religion. It is through relationship. What does it say here? Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So that means a relationship. That means we are now related to God the Father because we have been restored to his family. Now, does that mean that all people automatically are saved? Just because Jesus Christ came to planet Earth, that means that man trying to say no. We still must receive him. We still must believe. So that you see, there was a whole group of people in his day who saw him, who listened to him, who watched him, and yet rejected him. Because they did not understand that he was the true light, that he was the Son of God, that he was there to be their Savior. But for those who did believe, who did receive, not only do we receive forgiveness of sins, but we have now a relationship with God as His children. In John chapter 3, we have a story. And that's the story of Nicodemus. Remember, Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night. And Nicodemus is a very religious man, one of the leaders of the Jews. And he's impressed with this young rabbi. He's impressed with this young man's teaching. And he realizes that only somebody sent from God could say and do the things that he does. And Jesus turns the tables on him and says, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. And again, that confuses Nicodemus totally. Because here he is, an old man. He's thinking, how in the world can I go back to my mother, climb into her womb, and come out again? That's impossible. But Jesus wasn't talking about physical birth. He was talking about spiritual birth. We need to be born again. And so what John is saying here is that the one that I'm going to introduce to you in this story, in this gospel, Jesus is the Word of God. He is the true life. He is the light, the true light. He came and he presented himself to mankind but mankind as a whole rejected him. But for those who received him, for those who believed in him, he gave them the right to become children of God. It's not earned. So there is re re revealing the light, 
That was John's job, John the Baptist. There is recognizing the light. The people as a whole did not recognize. There is receiving the light. Now, I want to give you an illustration. If you go back to verse 12, remember what it says? Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. In a sense, that is adoption. Now, in our family, we know quite a bit about that because my wife and her brother are both adopted. And we know the benefits of adoption. But have you ever considered how important adoption is? You know, just for fun this week, I, I got online and I typed in famous adopted persons. And I have a list that is so long here that I really can't read them all to you, but I'm just going to read some of the names. Some of these names you may be surprised at. Here are individuals that for whatever reason were adopted into a family. Aristotle, philosopher. Art Linkletter, comedian. Bo Diddley, musician. Charles Dickens, writer. Dave Thomas, founder of Wendy's. Edgar Allan Poe, writer. Eleanor Roosevelt, first lady. Faith Daniels, news anchor. Faith Hill, country singer. George Washington Carver, inventor. Halle Berry, actress. James In Ingrid Bergman, actress. James MacArthur, actor. James Michener, author. Jesse Jackson, minister. John Lennon, musician. Leo Tolstoy, writer. Louisa May Alcott, writer. Marilyn Monroe, actress. Mark Twain, writer. Melissa Gilbert, actress. Michael Reagan, dancer. Nancy Reagan, first lady. Nat King Cole, singer. President Gerald R. Ford, politician. President William Clinton, politician. Richard Burton, actor. Senator Robert Berger, politician. Steve Jobs, co-founder of Apple. And I'm just touching on just a few names. And the list goes on and on and on of famous people. Now, I don't know what the situation was where they were adopted out of or adopted into a family. But I'm just wondering how these individuals may have turned out had they never been adopted and adopted into the family that they were adopted into. You and I, according to what John tells us here, can be adopted. We can become part of the family of God. We can become children of God. Not in the generic sense, saying, well, all humans are children of God because we're created by Him, but in the specific sense. Remember, it's not religion that gets us back to the Lord. It's a relationship. A relationship with God that comes through Christ. And as John is writing this gospel, he wants us to understand from the very beginning who Jesus is and what his intention is. And so here at the very beginning, remember our key verses in verses 11 and 12 of chapter 1? He came to that which was his own. Here he is, the creator of the world. Here he comes to his own people, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. And so the point is, Jesus is the true light. The question is, am I a child of God? Some people think, well, I, I'm a Christian because I was born in the United States of America. Uh, or I, I'm very religious because I, I, I go to church. Or I try to be a good person. But what is important is a relationship. And that relationship with God the Father was broken by sin, but can be restored by our being adopted into his family. 
It's by his choice, it's by his will that we must receive it. And so as we get further into chapter 1 and start into the actual story of Jesus, as John is introducing him to us, he introduces him now as the true light who came. But remember, it's only those who receive and believe that have a, relate, a relationship with him as Father. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that we've had a chance to get further into chapter 1 of John. And Father, we thank you that Jesus is being revealed to us, not only by John the Baptist, but now by John the disciple who writes the story. Father, we pray that each and every one of us would realize who Jesus Christ is, that we would believe, that we would receive, and then so we would be adopted into your family. Father, we thank you for what you want to do in our lives. Help us as we go through this week, if we've received Christ, to live as if we are children of God. For it's in Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. All right, we want to conclude the service by just singing uh, one verse of a hymn. I'd invite you to stand. And uh, if you've got the microphone there, text, would you pronounce the benediction for us, please? Shepherd of love.